Many people watching at this time would have seen the Israeli series Forda. It was a sensation not just in Israel but across the world. Many on OTT would have watched it. One of the most powerful characters in that Israeli series is Nurit. Uh, Nurit is Rona Lee Shimon. She's joining us now live from Tel Aviv. Uh, welcome, uh, Nurit. Welcome, Rona Lee Shimon. I must tell you that. I have watched uh, Fauda so intensely, so closely. It's one of my favorite series, and you are one of our favorite characters. So it's an absolute delight in completely the wrong circumstances uh, to have you with us. And thank you for taking our time. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I just have to say, I don't see you. Okay, so we'll try and uh, set that right. Nurit, I want to start by asking you about what the last 10 days have been, because you play the role of Nurit in, on the screen, where there's a lot of chaos, there's a lot of bloodshed, and then to be in the midst of something which looks so surreal, so unexpected, happening all around you. Uh, the last 10 days have been one of the most horrific days I've ever encountered in my life. Um, hopefully this will never happen again, but this is a very interesting and horrible time in the history of, of my people. Um, you know, what's surreal about it is, is um, Fauda is just a TV show, right? At the end of the day, we all take off our guns, we take off our makeup, and we go home. Um, and what happened on October 7th in Israel has changed people's lives forever. Uh, the massacre that was done by Hamas terrorists will never be forgotten and never be forgiven. And this is what we're living in the past 10 days. You know, there are many Hezbollah, Hamas attacks that get foiled, some that go through in Fauda, but they all happen at a very small scale. In Israel, everyone grows up with the fear of violence, but the manner in which the Hamas was able to uh, pull off this attack, the magnitude of the attack, the precision of the attack. As somebody who's played the role of Nurit on the screen, what did you make of the manner in which these terrorists were able to plan and execute the attack that they did? I think there's a very big difference between the show I played on and the reality of my country right now. You need to understand that this is not war. What Hamas did to us a week ago is not war. They infiltrated Israel. They infiltrated the homes of people at six o'clock in the morning, kidnapped them from their home, raped them, beheaded babies, cut off pregnant women, belly, took her fetus from outside of her belly, burned it alive, and then burned her. They tied up children, they tied up their parents, tortured them, raped them in front of their kids. They filmed everything. They filmed the massacre. They were live on Facebook. Not, you know, your, your people keep comparing it to the show. I don't think we could, not, no one that I know in their right mind could write such atrocities because the human mind cannot really comprehend what happened to us. People around the world, you know, it's funny, I hear people say that maybe this must be fake, it's not true, and I understand because it's really hard for people to understand that someone's so sick in their mind in order to do such evil, evil acts to other human beings. No, absolutely. In fact, there's been such an outpouring of support, uh, sympathy and, you know, just empathy for the people of Israel for what they've been through. As you know, India has suffered many uh, terror attacks, nothing quite as bad as this. It was 2611 made international headlines on brutal attacks. But this, as you correctly say, take terrorism and the definition of what a terrorist organization could pull off to a whole different level it's beyond uh, the imagination of any person in terms of the scale and magnitude of the attack, Nurit. You need to understand, the world need to understand. This is a whole new thing. This was never done before. We've been fighting Hamas and Hezbollah for 70 years with rockets, with terror attacks. What was done 
to us on October 7th is something completely different. It is evil in its incarnation. This will never be forgotten. It is written on the history of the internet forever. It will live there forever. You need to understand, the world needs to understand this is a whole new breed of war crime. This is not a war. This is the, the, the people that kidnapped, that are kidnapped, they're sitting now in Gaza, are 199 people, 36 of them are from 36 different countries. It's not just us. And this is a whole new level of evil than what humanity had known in the modern world. As a young Israeli, what do you think is the most justified response? Where do you think this should end? We've already seen Benjamin Netanyahu, Israel's prime minister, talking about wanting to wipe Israel off the face of the earth. Look, it's not my job to say. I'm not the head of state of Israel. I'm a citizen. I'm a citizen who cares deeply about what is going on. The first thing I can tell you that needs to be done is the global um, uh, community in the world should stand, unite in one mission to bring the hostages back. That is the first thing that needs to happen. After that, we will deal with what will come after that with the UN, with, with whoever needs, with America. We will deal with this later. The first thing that needs to happen is the world should care about what was done to us and the world should care about bringing our people back. And the world does truly care uh, about what happened in Israel and there's very strong support. But there are also questions, uh, Rana, about the possibility of overreaction, the fact that electricity was earlier cut off, water was cut off, and people saying Israel should stay within the laws of war and not do anything which isn't humanitarian, which uh, impacts common Gazans who are not from the Hamas. How do you respond to that sense? Yeah, we've been hearing a lot about, uh, you know, the word proportion has been used a lot the past week. But let me tell you about proportion. Because being proportionate to what they have done to us, meaning that our soldiers would have to go in and do what they did to us. And I can promise you, never in the history of Israel, and it will never happen, that an Israeli soldier would go in to our enemy territory and rape women in the most horrid way. I don't know if you get the videos. In the most horrid way the human imagination can imagine behead babies from their crib, kidnap from six-year-old babies to 85-year-old Holocaust survivors. Our people could never do that. That is not the Jewish morality. That's it. That's all I have to say about that. You know, we're seeing a lot of young Israelis come back. There were some in India, some in Japan, some in different parts of Africa doing different things. Reservists, many of them wanting to come back, it seems. Despite all the internal differences of the past several months, Israel and Jews coming together in an unprecedented fashion against this common enemy. I have to tell you that it doesn't matter what happens inside our country. You can say things about the government, you can like it, you cannot like it, but the Jewish people, our strength is in our unity. It always has been. We have such strong collateral for each other. We feel like we are a big, big family all over the world. There was no question that when this happened, our family from all over the world would come and join us in our fight to defend Israel. You know, you put out this uh, story on Instagram, Rona, I saw that. And it's just so gripping because you basically just captured from 6 a.m. till 11 uh, different people reaching out, notifications coming of rocket attacks, of a Hamas attack. Is that an artistic representation? Is that really what happened with you and your family and that's your own fault? It's, I don't think it's relevant what happened to me and my family because we were the lucky ones, you know? Um, but right now, seven days a week later, none of us are the lucky ones. We all share the shame. We all share the grief. We're all in this together. Um, 
and we all try to support whether it's the army whether it's the people who survived the, the, the massacred party the the butchered kibbutz um, and and that's that's our national um, Mamats, uh, how do you say the the effort? That's the national effort that right now all of Israel is concerned about. You know, and the one part of this attack that just times out as being the most depraved is where the young adults partying at a rave. There's, they're in the desert. They're just having a good time. They're not armed. They're not combatants. Furthest from, and they get attacked very clearly. The Hamas knew that there was this uh, music festival taking place. They've come in with military precision. They've surrounded that dance party from three sides uh, at the music festival. And they've gone in and attacked people who were just out having a good time and had nothing to do with this conflict. Yes, they did. Exactly what you said. That's exactly what they did. I don't know if it was... Uh, I, I, know, I know one thing. I know they went with clear intention for massacre they were bloodthirsty they were they wanted to hurt people to humiliate them to rape them to butcher mm. them they did it with with joy and ha they were proud of what they were doing and you can see from their videos mm. that that's what they came for and that's what they're going to pay for and israel will win how would you define victory what does as a young israeli not just as an actor but as a young israeli who's so furious at what your nation's been through uh ronali shimon what does victory look like what does the end look like to you in this i think there are two victories that i would want to see i want to see all of the hostages back in their homes as fast as possible i think this should be a global effort from all our friends all around the world. And I want to see Hamas eliminated. That would be a victory for us. But, you know, just, I'm very curious, not as a politician, but just as an Israeli, what do you say to those who'd say that, you know, you can't really eliminate the Hamas. It's an ideology. You can eliminate the current leadership of the Hamas, but till the time there is genuine peace, there's a genuine two-state solution, there will be no end to this problem that Israel also needs to give enough space for there to be a meaningful formation of Palestine. Without that, this problem will keep rearing its head in some form oh, or shape. Oh, no, you are mistaken. This fight has nothing to do with land. It has nothing. The concept is what the Western world does not understand, is that Hamas, by any means, want to better the lives of Palestinians. The amount of money that they got from the UN, from America, and from Israel to build infrastructure. You know what they could have done in the 18 years that Israel has not been occupied Gaza. You know what they could have done with the amount of money that they got? It could have been a place of heaven, a place of prosperity. They have done none of that. All they did was create machines to kill everyone who is not like them. Make no mistakes. That is the truth. That is the no, and in fact, I mean, you said... Not, you know what? You know what? When people scream all around the world, free Palestine, what they mean is free Hamas. And Hamas, on October 7th, proved to the world that Hamas is ISIS. And the way America deleted, elim eliminated uh, ISIS, this is how we're going to eliminate uh, Hamas. That's it. You know, theaters in Israel have gone dark. The country's film and TV industry has shut down operations. So we're seeing a lot of solidarity, even by theater artists, film artists, uh, for what has happened in Israel and for your country's fight back. Wait, I'm sorry, I didn't understand the question. I was saying that I was reading Israeli media which said theaters in Israel have gone dark and the country's film and TV industry has shut down operations after this attack in a sign of solidarity and support for the IDF, for the nation in its fight back against the Hamas? Look, I don't believe a lot of people are working. I think this country is traumatized. I think we are all, what we're doing morning tonight is first of all, pray that this is a nightmare that we're gonna wake up from, but we understand every single day that this is our new reality. 
And everybody in Israel, that's all we do morning to night is to figure out how we can help what is needed from us, whether it be food or clothes to the people who their houses were burned, to our soldiers, to hug them, to give them, to give them strength. And that's what all of Israel is doing right now. And I can understand how emotional and tough a time this is for you. How have you, uh, Rona, been trying to help out this con your country's cause in this fight back in whatever little uh, form and shape you and your friends and your family have been contributing? Tell us a bit about that. I feel like I've been doing what everybody else is doing. I am called to from, you know, helping get food and, and supply to the army, to go and talk to the people who survived the atrocities. Um, uh, Hasbara, I'm doing everything and I will do everything in my power, everything to help the war effort right now. You said that Israel has changed forever after the 7th of October. Like this is like America is 9-11, many people comparing it with that. In your view, what is this new Israel? How is it changed? And how is the new Israel different from the Israel before the 7th of October? I think the understanding that what we're dealing with is ISIS. I think we are never going to be the same because up until now, I think we had different views on what we were dealing with. And they had just proven that it's a whole other story. You know, we've been reading reports of many young Israelis joining the IDF. In fact, one of your uh, crew members, Idan Ahmadi, has actually joined the Israel Defense Forces. So, you know, it's not just playing that role on the screen, but also wanting to contribute with the real war effort uh, that's being waged at this moment. Yes, definitely. Whoever has been called to the reserves is, is going to the reserves. Everybody, everybody. Fathers, sons, everybody. Finally, and before I conclude, Rana Ali Shimon, your message to those watching in India, watching you across the world, as a young Israeli, what's the thing that you want to highlight the most as people look at Israel's response after this Hamas attack? I want to say from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you for standing with Israel because you need to understand right now it's a very important period in, in the history of the world. You're either with the good guys or with the bad guys. And the fact that our longtime friend India is with the good guys in the good side of history, we will never forget this. This is the best thing that you can do for us. Speak for us, speak our truth, speak in, in, in our behalf and um, that's the one thing I want to ask from you guys. So thank you. Thank you for, for broadcasting our stories and keep doing that. And thank you so much to all my Indian friends. Brother Lee Shimon, over the past several minutes, you've captured not just your emotions, but you've also shown our viewers what young Israel is thinking at this moment. Uh, your anger, your frustration, uh, very, very palpable for joining us at what's been a very, very difficult time, arguably the toughest time in your nation, and for sharing your thoughts. Thank you very much, Nurit. Rana Ali Shimon, they're one of the key characters, uh, and also the fact that so many women, you know, that's something which is very interesting, because in India, very recently, I must tell you this, Rana, women weren't in combat roles. It's only changing now, and I think the role that you play, Nurit, and the fact that there's so many Nurits in the IDF who are out with the boys, uh, kicking the bad guys, shooting at them, is really so inspirational for people in India, for young girls to say, okay, I want to grow up and be like Nurit. That's incredible. I'm so happy that, um, that you guys are getting uh, inspiration from, from this and, 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 uh, and reaching your dreams through, through what we've done. So thank you. And thank, thank you, you so for much. joining us. Deeply appreciate your time. Rana Lee Shimon, the actor Nurit from the series Fauda. And I think she makes a very important point. This is way beyond. The writers of Fauda actually came from the IDF. Uh, it's based on an Israeli unit called Dua, then Unit 217. Uh, 
Uh, Leo Raz developed uh, this series because he'd been in this unit and he was able to capture in a very realistic fashion the challenges that the Israeli forces had in dealing with foes like the Hamas, with the Hezbollah. But this, as uh, Nuhit just said, way beyond anything that even the writer of fiction could have imagined.